Good day. Another day, another dollar. Um, Tuesday, um, 10.58 a.m. Um, today, um, I am concocting something, okay? And this is part of what I love about being CEO is my, my schedule. Sometimes it's crazy, but oftentimes it's flexible, particularly when we're in a groove. We're in a groove right now operationally, so everybody's doing their thing. And it leaves me to do the things that I think are most high impactful. And right now, I really feel like Loop needs some buzz, okay? I don't know if you guys remember, but um, when Loop first started, you know, before we launched, so we raised money and then, you know, it takes a year to launch an insurance product. So there was like a year where we had cash and time and we were building towards launching the actual insurance product. So, you know, we were 100% focused on buzz. We were building the wait list. We were making noise. You know, Carrie and I got on the Breakfast Club. Uh, we got on Earn Your Leisure. We got on all the big shows. We just made a bunch of noise. We were in the press. Um, it was a good time for us momentum-wise. And then we went live, and we kind of fell flat, to be honest. Like, um, the buzz outpaced our ability to execute. Um, now, our ability to execute is there, but we're missing the buzz. So... Today, I've assigned myself the job of getting some buzz going, okay? I want the way I do it, okay, pay attention here, and you're going to see this executed in real time, um, like on Instagram, so you'll see that I'm money on it, on this. So I like to go with a groundswell, so I like to go and hit up blogs and publications, like micro blogs, right, people of color and tech, like places that are kind of safe bets for me. We have relationships already. I can hit them up. They have reach. And I'm just going to get a groundswell going of coverage from those blogs. And then typically that builds up into industry publications like Forbes and TechCrunch. And then that layers up into some press releases that I have queued up for some big deals that we've closed but we just haven't announced. And then maybe that turns into, you know, a groundswell of, potentially national news, you know, who knows where it goes from there. You can't really control that, but you can control the effort you put into starting the groundswell. So that's what we're going to do today. I have a marketing all hands today that JC, our head of growth is running. So that's perfect because that's exactly the team that I want to speak to because what we want to do is we want to have our marketing team at the ready. So when these things drop, boom, our marketing team is able to just, um, Capitalize on, capitalize on it, take those assets, re, you know, redesign them in our style and our brand and give them back to me. And then, uh, you know, I'm kind of, I kind of help the media machine run at loop at the moment because we've leaned that team down and, you know, I'm a, kind of a more public facing CEO. So, um, we work well together. Um, so that's the, um, focus today, uh, among, some, some deal work that we're doing. Remember when I was in New York city with that strategic partner, we're still moving that deal along. Um, so some deal work, but really mostly it's the day of getting some buzz going. And if I do this right, uh, this Tuesday, you know, you'll see us in the news in the next coming days and also weeks. So, um, let's lock in and see what we can make happen. So I got a micro blog to pick up the story. Um, I drafted my own press release, you know, on Google AdWords, or I'm sorry, on Google Docs, right? So they asked for a press release, drafted it, sent it to them. They picked it up. They sent it back to me. They published the article already. And um, now we're going back and forth on the Instagram asset. So I get to weigh in on what I think it should say, because, you know, I think some certain things travel more than others. And so kind of working that up now and, you know, should be live here on Instagram in just a little bit. So making progress. On a media kick right now, so I'm just answering comments, your guys' comments, which I really appreciate.
All right, so the social post, we agreed on the copy and it's gonna drop a little bit later today. I am queuing up a press release right now for tomorrow to announce our reinsurance renewal. Um, and then um, working on getting Carrie a feature on a very respectable publication from a very respected writer. Um, and it's gonna be kind of women focused because March is Women's History Month. So just as a reference, like whenever you're going for press and you're reaching out to writers and stuff, by the way, they all want to hear from you. The, their job is to produce stories, so you got to pitch them stories. Um, it does help when you have a con relationship with them, but you don't need to. A lot of them are on Twitter. They have, they're on Instagram. You can reach out. But um, a lot of times they're looking for what's called a news peg. So a news peg is um, what is happening in culture and in the broader world that you can attach your story to. So a, a easy one being, well, Black History Month, a lot of black founders and a lot of black people get featured, right? Because that's the news peg. So then March is Women's History Month, so that could be a news peg. Another type of news peg could be, you know, Trump's in the news, like how can you tie yourself to Trump? Or, or that's not necessarily a good example, but the, the point is anything that's current and popping, you can, somehow fit your story to that and that's a news peg so for example car insurance has been in the news nationally because car insurance rates have risen an average of 24 percent over the last year um so you know d different things like that so that's kind of your you it is helpful to have a pr firm do this for you but you know and they're valid. I've been critiqued for saying that they're not valuable. I think that there's value in that for sure. You just got to have the resources for it, right? So like probably a good firm, a boutique firm probably starts at like two and a half thousand, but more realistically, $5,000 a month. And there's an initiation. And then on top of that, um, you got to get it going for like three, four, five, six months, right? So that's $30,000 of getting fine tuning with this press release firm. And then you can probably reap dividends for some time. And they're going to have connections that you don't and they craft stories and they're pitching you all day. And, you know, there's definitely a big advantage in, in doing that. Um, but we're just not at the point where that's what we need right now. What we need right now is just a groundswell of movement of activity. And if you ask me why I want that, it's because like, you know, I just want to be top of mind again. I think that there's a lot of really good reasons to be top of mind. You know, you get more deals done, people reach out to you, there's more serendipity, employees will work for you, customers will sign up for you, your existing employees stick around. You know, there's really nothing, the only downside with being top of mind is you get more exposure, like there's ex there's risk and exposure, but you know, if you're doing all the right things and you know, you have good intention and you have honest business practices, you know, it doesn't really, that's really not too material of a risk. And, and, or I should say that the, the upside far outweighs the downside. So that's what I want right now is that, is that groundswell. And you know, it really helps because if you don't have that visibility, if you don't have that momentum, then all you have going for you is what you're spending in ads, right? And like that gets expensive over time. It's very expensive to be lukewarm, right? When you're average, you have to pay for visibility. But when you're doing something different, differentiated, and people are talking about it, you can still augment your visibility with pay, but for every you know thousand impressions of paid, you're gonna have another thousand to match organically, and that's where you really start to get that that viral lift. Um, and it's one thing if you're like an influencer and that virality just ties some more eyeballs. It's a whole other thing when you have a machine, when you have a business, and that virality ties back into a product that you can sell repeatedly. So that's kind of what we're in the midst of engineering right now. And, um, you know, it's a good start right now. We have some work yet to do, um, but promising start. Because I didn't realize that that's showing up as a Zendesk field. So we can take that and add urgency to the person specific to them. Like this is when your link expires, rather yeah. than the broad statement of the 31st. I yeah, don't copy document. I updated it so now it's just in purple highlight. So it's like it can change, but it's a personal lookup. And I just put bind link to variable. We'll change it if you need Yeah. Okay, a little update here. Um, social post is live. 
blog post from that same blog is live about the shift to LinkedIn. Got the press release queued up. It's going out tomorrow. And um, did hear back from the publication that that interview is scheduled for tomorrow as well. Um, so, um, you know, again, there's arguably more important things to be doing, um, but not that much more, right? Like there's some big deal things I mentioned that I'm still moving forward, but um, right now we don't have a comms team and our marketing team is very focused on just like growing the business, which is a very good use of their time. And it's, we're doing like, as I said before in the prior episodes, like paid stuff, right? So paid spend and you know, it's very optimized and conversion oriented. We're not doing that much storytelling brand momentum. And, and I just kind of feel like it's a, it's a vulnerability and it takes a long time to get growing. And so on a day where I have the time and I got the inspiration, let me make a few calls. And so, um, that's what we've been doing. And, um, yeah, feeling pretty good, coming pretty easy, haven't been in the news a whole lot. And so I think, but, but I had in the past, right? So I can hit up some people, hey, you wanna catch up? You wanna tell the story? And with every publication, there's different angles, right? So if you're going to Forbes, it's more about the business. If you're going to kind of Black Enterprise, it's more about the founder feature. If you're going to you know, press release, it's more about a specific deal. So you kind of just tailor the story to the publication, find a news peg and reach out. And you know you get mostly no's, but you know you, for the most, occasionally you get these yeses. I haven't gotten that many no's because you know I have some equity in the space and I just I haven't cashed in on it in a long time. So um, yeah, going pretty good. Um, gonna go for some lunch and continue this. I'm like kind of in a groove here. So I'm just gonna just continue doing this kind of work for probably another hour or two and just see how much of a swell we can generate to be posted. All right. Um, night has fallen. It is now 5.22 p.m., so it's not terribly late. Um, and my mission for the day is complete. Um, got a successful amount of buzz going. Feel really good about that. Um, we're, it's not done. It's probably going to be a multiple week long layering of storytelling. You know, we're not living in a world anymore where you can tell your story in one piece or, I mean, you can tell your story in one piece, but it's not going to be fully digested by the entire marketplace, you know, one in one go. It, you now have to tell your story in little micro moments over time, constantly delivering net new news. Right? So every time your audience hears about you, it's something net new, something they haven't heard before. And that's kind of an art. And what you can do is you can take all the little things that you have going on in your company and frame it as net new news, right? A new app rollout. We just launched Roadside. We're now doing, um, we just closed this deal. We have this new partnership. We just closed this financing. Here's a feature on our founder. Our founder was over here speaking. One of our employees you know, had this, had that happens, you know, and all of the data points and the nodes that you have in your network, you can kind of layer into this storytelling of net new news. So that's a multiple week long and probably honestly month long and even quarter long and even year long thing that compounds the longer you do it and, you know, really turns into a lot of value over time. So um, we pretty much just got to a point where today I kickstarted that and I feel really content with those efforts um, um, and also did a bunch of other things today picked up the phone spoke to you know never underestimate the how powerful the phone is as a business development tool right um, and I'm that's a reminder to myself really more than anything because I am I am uh, uh, mostly behind my desk, mostly sending emails. You know, obviously I'm working remote and selling by myself. Otherwise, I'd be in person with my team. But even that, when you pick up the phone, that to me means you're making calls outside of the organization. Okay, you're calling partners, stakeholders, board members, prospective, you know, investors, 
employee, uh, prospective employees, you know, potential deal partners and channel partners. And, you know, you're making moves. And also in this case today, I spoke to mentors today. I had a couple mentors call me. I'm helping them close deals that aren't even related to mine. Sometimes you, sometimes the best thing you can do for your own business is help other people without any expectation of anything in return. And it may not even have anything to do with your business. So, um, you know, just some serendipity lessons, if you will. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, that's kind of the, the lesson for today. Um, there's a, a couple of other things I could touch on, but I want to keep this uh, episode topical. That way it's a little bit easier to digest. Um, and then, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow we have a busy day, massively busy day. We have the, our front end team is doing a sprint review. So we'll see all the things that they built. I'm doing my check-ins with my leads. Um, I'm, we have a check-in with one of our reinsurers. We have a finance strategy meeting. And then we're doing this big like prioritization framework meeting, which basically is like, remember how we were talking about efficiency versus effectiveness? That's the meeting where we're going to decide in what, in what, like when we are being efficient, how, like, how are we, uh, what's the framework that we're going to use to de determine how efficient we want to be? It's a little jargony sounding, but tomorrow I'll unpack it. Um, long day. Got to get in lift number two. Um, and yeah, another day, another vlog. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Also, I appreciated the, uh, the amount of commentary on the last video, you know, I think that having a prompt really helped. So, um, so I might just ask here again, um, something else. And that is maybe I just ask you what it is that you're working through. Like, is there a specific challenge or bottleneck that you're working through? Because I think one thing I can do in addition to the vlogs is maybe make some offshoots and address some specific concerns where I can be helpful. Um, sometimes it's hard to do that generally, but it's a little bit easier when I'm directed towards specific, you know, um, like needs. So, yep. I'm going to, Ship this down. Uh, hopefully it'll be uploaded here in the next 30 and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.